If you could count for a year, would you get to infinity or somewhere in that vicinity? So right now we're going to look at the axioms. And first, what really is probability? When we say P of V equals something, what does that really mean? Well, let's say S, the sample space, is all possible outcomes, and N E here is the number of times E occurs in the first N repetitions of the experiment. It follows then that you can take the probability E to be the number of times this event occurs over the number of times you've really done the experiment. And if you go off to infinity, this will converge to one value, and that's the probability will happen. And this is called the relative frequency definition of probability. Now people can ask, how do you know it'll actually converge to a value? You know, if you do this experiment a thousand times, the probability of E could be 30%. Do it a billion times, the probability of E could be 10%. And you know, it could just keep jumping all over the place depending on the number of times you run the experiment. Well, the truth is we assume, and that's one of the axioms, we assume that it really will converge for this definition of probability to work. The first axiom really states that the probability E, the event E, is either going to happen, it's not going to happen, or something in between. The second axiom is stating that when we have a sample space S, which is made up of all the events of an experiment, we're assuming that one of those events actually does have to happen, that we're, we have all events in mind. So the probability has to happen, it's one. So if we have a set of events where EI and EJ, where I and J are not equal, so they're all different events, are always mutually exclusive. So every single event is mutually exclusive to the other one, which means if one happens, the other one can't. And when we union all those together and take the probability, that's the same thing as adding up each individual probability. For many experiments, it's natural to assume that all outcomes of an experiment are equally probable, so the probability of one event is equal to another. And if that's true, if we can make that assumption, then that really means that the probability of any event E equals the proportion of outcomes in the sample space that are contained in E. If someone says it's 80% likely Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, well that kind of disagrees with our definition of probability of a frequency of an event defining probability like rolling dice. And this is actually a personal or subjective view of probability and in fact it's just simply waiting in an individual's belief in a specific statement. And so that's the other view and it's important to know that all the axioms mentioned still hold for this view as well. Yes, try as you may, you just can't get away from mathematics.